Good morning and welcome to Raymond Durban's Sunday morning service here in sunny South Africa and what a beautiful day it is this Sunday morning. It's so good to have you here with us today. To all our partners, our members and subscribers, it's so good to have you back. God bless you. All right. If this is your very first time with us today, you are in for a special encounter with the Lord. And your life is going to change in ways that you never thought possible. Now let me declare something over you. I want you to receive it on your end. I declare over you open doors of opportunity. I declare unexpected income, supernatural debt cancellation, financial freedom to you right now in Jesus' name. We declare favor over you and your family as you go into your communities, into your cities, into your schools, and into your marketplace. God has prepared you for such a time as this. You shall have the Midas touch. Everything that you set your hands to do from this day forward will succeed and prosper. And you shall be all that God has called you to be this day in Jesus' name. And God's church said, Amen. Hallelujah. So as we get into the service this morning, I want to share with you quickly a message from our daily devotional called the Faith Chronicles, which is available on our mobile application. All right. This is a powerful tool that will help you in your daily walk with the Lord. All right. Today's title is You Were Born for His Purpose. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21, you can make plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. It's not about you. The purpose of your life is far greater than your own personal fulfillment. If you want to know why you were placed on the planet, you must begin with God. You were born by His purpose and for His purpose. You discover your purpose and your identity through the relationship with Jesus. His purpose for your life predates your conception. All right, He planned it before you existed without any of your own input. You may get to choose many things, but you don't get to choose your purpose. Two ways to discover your purpose is speculation or revelation. All right. God planned your purpose before your existence without your input. Psalms 139 says so. It says, you saw me before I was born and scheduled each day of my life before I could even breathe. Every day was recorded in your book. You are not an accident, my friend. God's purpose for your anticipated human error and even sin. You may even be driven by a painful memory, a haunting fear, or an unconscious belief. There are hundreds of circumstances, values, and emotions that can drive your life. Meditate on the fact that your life was carefully planned by God. Now let's say the confession together. My life has a purpose, and by revelation, and God's word, I will discover his plan for my life in Jesus' name. So as we get into the praise and worship, if you haven't already downloaded our mobile application, you can do so after the service. It's called FCI Online. You can even watch the live stream right there. It's available on all mobile application app stores. All right. It's a great resource for your life and your walk with the Lord. Or you can go to raymaderman.co.za. All the info and all the links are right there. All right. If you're watching via live stream, let us know where you are watching from. We'd love to connect with you. Inbox us. Should you have a prayer request in the meeting or even after the meeting, contact us. A pastor is waiting on the other line and he can speak with you. He can share with you. He can he can help you. All right. He can pray with you. If you are touched during the meetings and, and you need to tell us about it. All right. Understand that a, that out of the 10 lepers, only one leper came back and said thank you to the Lord. All right. So God is going to touch some people. Contact us. Let us know. Speak to us. Email us. All right. Tell us exactly what God is doing in your life and give us your testimony. We can pray. We can seal that healing with you. All right. So for everybody else, I want to say, let's grab everybody around the house. Let's put away all the distractions. Uh, let's move the coffee table out the way. Let's dance before the Lord. Enjoy the praise and worship. And I'll be back with you shortly. God bless you.
just wherever you are, lift up your hands and just worship God and say, The atmosphere is changing now For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all around Spirit of the Lord is here. Oh, the atmosphere is changing now. Oh, yeah. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all. device, every building.
A miracle can happen now For the Spirit of the Lord is here Wherever you are, declare this right now
like God. heaven and earth. Come on, church, lift your voices and sing here in your presence. All things become new. And we, your family, Lord Father, we bow before you.
Well, I trust that you enjoyed the praise and worship as much as I did here in the studio. As we prepare to sow our seed and give our tithe this morning, I'd like to read a passage of scripture from the Fed Chronicle, all right, and a message, and it is entitled, Wealth and Prosperity is Your Portion. In 3 John 2, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. You are blessed like Abraham. God is your provider and you lack nothing. You have a God of abundance who rejoices in your prosperity. You have abundance in all things. It is God and none other that makes you rich. You are so rich and prosperous. Come on, declare that right now. You must be resolved to be God inside minded. When you build your magnificent dwellings to live in, you must remember to thank God. As your silver and gold multiplies, you must remember to thank Him. From today, dwell in the realm of abundance that God has provided for you. Begin to live in the land of abundance. God has given you power and supernatural ability to create wealth. You are a wealth creator day in and day out. You are given unfailing ideas for the production of wealth in your life. Begin to take part in these gracious provisions. The Lord wants you to have material things. You are so blessed. You are so loaded. You are so rich and so successful. To God be all the praise, honor, and glory. Now let's say the confession together. I make up my mind to believe God for wealth and prosperity so I can be a blessing to Him and all around me in Jesus' name. So as you sow your seed today, there are multiple ways to give. We have a giving tab within our mobile application. You can sow directly here on the screen by scanning the barcodes, both for Zapper and SnapScan. Or you can go to giving.raymadurban.co.za where you can do an online transaction. So let's get into the word with Dr. Rishan Singh. Grab your Bible, your notepad, your pen, all right? Uh, Put away all the other distractions around the house. Let's get everybody in front of the TV. Let's watch, let's learn the word. And from me, Wesley Singh, and from the family of Raymond Durbin, God bless you and enjoy the rest of the broadcast.
Good morning to all our members and partners, our subscribers and viewers. This is Dr. Singh here from Raymond Durban FCI Ministries in South Africa. Remember these words from the book of Romans 10 verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I trust that today you will enjoy the program with me. We praise God for another day and another opportunity to share with you the word of the living God. And we welcome you today to enjoy God's word with me as we will go through the scriptures and the teaching. And firstly to our church members and church family and to all those that have tuned into our broadcast from all over the world. Today I'm going to share on a series of teaching called Blessed Beyond Measure. And I know that you will be encouraged, built up by the Word of God. And that, so once again, thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time. Now let's pray before we get into the Word of God. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your Word. Thank you for the revelation and understanding by your precious holy word. I pray that we be filled with the full, deep and clear knowledge of your will in all spiritual understanding and wisdom. I pray that we have a comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of God and an understanding and discernment of spiritual things. I pray that by hearing and studying your precious word, we will steadily grow and increase in and by the knowledge of God. I pray that we be invigorated and strengthened with all power according to your might, to your glory, to exercise every kind of endurance and patience and perseverance and forbearance with joy. And Father, I take this opportunity to thank you because you have qualified us and made all of us fit to share in the portion which is by inheritance rightfully ours. Father, I thank you for the name of our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I thank you, Lord, for the name of Jesus, your Son, whom, O oh God, is our elder brother. And I thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit that has been given us. Lord, on the day of Pentecost, all right up until now, to walk with us, lead us, guide us, and govern us. Thank you so much, Lord God, for this opportunity to share God's word with God's people. So I trust that you will enjoy the program with me today. And I want to talk about blessed beyond measure. And we are talking about the sixth, or part number five rather, of blessed beyond measure. Now in Genesis 26 verses 13 to 14, we find a very interesting phenomena that there was increase in times of famine. The Bible tells us the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks, and possession of herds, and great stores of servants. And the scripture ends up by saying that the Philistines envied him. Well, what would you expect? When God starts to bless you, God starts to prosper you, the people that are negative around you cannot help but to be envious of you. Now, let me explain the word wax great in the Hebrew. The word means to prosper, to increase, to advance, to enlarge, and to expand. So the Bible says here, that he became very great. 
Now, in the Hebrew, it actually means speedily, rapidly, and quickly. So he became very great speedily, rapidly, and quickly. So the man became prosperous, and he grew constantly, great until he had grown very great. Even in comparison to others, Isaac grew great. Now, why did he grow great, you may ask? It was simply because of the blessing. It was the blessing of God on Isaac's life that quickly prospered him, that increased him, advanced and expanded him during an economic downturn. Therefore, as we experience now all over the world and experience, we're experiencing an economic downturn. Don't let your eyes focus on the economic downturn, but let our eyes rather focus on the Word of God and on the Spirit of God to provide our every need and more so that we can be a blessing to others. So because of the blessing, and this is an important point. Because of the blessing, Isaac grew quickly, and he prospered, and he increased. He advanced and expanded. The New King James Version reads as follows. It says this, The man began to prosper, and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds, and a great number of servants. And the Bible ends up by saying in that scripture, so the Philistines envied him. The New Living Translation of the Bible says the following, He became a very, very rich man. And his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. He acquired so many flocks and sheep and goats, herds of cattle and servants that the Philistines became jealous over him. Another word for jealousy, as I used earlier on, was that they were envious of him. The Amplified Bible says, And the man became great and gained more and more until he became very wealthy and distinguished. He owned flocks, herds, and a great supply of servants, and the Philistines envied him. Well, the Message Bible says it in another way, which is also very interesting. It says the man got richer and richer by the day until he was very wealthy. He had flocks of sheep and cattle and many enterprises. And uh, this is so interesting that he just kept on growing, kept on growing, and kept on increasing. And Genesis 26, 14 to 16, the Bible tells us that the end result of his prosperity was that the Philistines were jealous over him. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to share this here. Jealousy comes as a result of wanting what someone else has. People are not jealous over the lack of another. No, they become jealous over another's increase and in another person's success. Isaac became the richest man in the world. Isaac became even bigger than the king's palace. Isaac's staff, riches, and estate increased in the midst of famine. So in famine, we find that Isaac just carried on increasing. He produced fruit, and it will, it will accomplish all that it has to do. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say to you that trusting God, believing God, and doing it God's way, you will increase, you will advance speedily, and you will become very, very fruitful. In verse 14, the Philistines envied Isaac because of the blessing that was upon him. They saw, they actually literally saw the blessing on Isaac and they became envious because of that. Men don't envy poverty. They envy someone who has more than them. The Philistines filled up the wells that Abraham dug. In verse 16, Abimelech asked Isaac to leave Gerah because he had become mightier and more powerful. Mightier in the Hebrew says, increase to become numerous. The Message Bible says, leave, you have become too big for us. Can you imagine that? They even begged him and said, leave us, you have come bigger than us. Now in Genesis 26, verse 18 to 21, the Bible says, And the Philistines kept on filling Isaac's wells. Every time he dug up a well, they filled it. Every time he dug up a well, they filled it. But the Bible tells us that Isaac kept on expanding in spite of the persecution. Now, I'd like to make a comment or two here. You cannot stop another man's blessing. When God has blessed that man or woman or that ministry, God is with them. You cannot fight God, overcome God. Well, instead of trying to stop the blessing, you might as well celebrate and become a partaker of the blessing of God. So the Bible tells us that Isaac kept on expanding in spite of the persecution. Well, Rehoboth means room, streets, broad, and spacious places, an enlargement. In the NIV translation, it says, At last, the Lord has made room for us, and we will be able to thrive and prosper in the land. And the Message Bible says he named that well Rehoboth, Wide Open Spaces. In verse 24, the Bible tells us that the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, your father. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your seed for my servant Abraham's sake. You see, what was happening here was that Isaac was experiencing the blessing of God and partaking of the generational blessing that his father Abraham enjoyed. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you to walk by faith. And your faith will only work if you walk in love. So you're going to walk both by faith and in love. In Hebrews 10.35, in the Amplified Version, the Bible says the following, Do not therefore fling away your fearless confidence, for it carries a great and glorious compensation of reward. In Galatians 6 verse 9, in the Amplified Version of the Bible, it says, Let us not lose heart or grow weary and faint, and faint in, the, in acting nobly and doing right. For in due time and at the appointed season we shall reap. For we do not loosen or relax our courage and faint. So here the Bible is encouraging us not to lose courage and faint. 
So if you are listening to me today, I'm saying to you, please don't lose courage and faint. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 20 verse 3, it says, It is an honor for a man to seize from strife. Well, ladies and gentlemen, strife is a blessing blocker. When you get into strife, it will block the blessings of God in your life. When you get into strife, it will stop good things happening in your life. The Bible tells us we have to protect our heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. In verse 16, the Bible says, the Philistine said, Go away from us. You're, might, you're much mightier than we are. You see, jealousy couldn't handle the success of Isaac. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, the Bible says, And thou shalt remember the Lord your God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. See, power to get wealth comes from God and God alone, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to thy fathers as it is to this day. You see, it is God that gives us the power to get wealth. Deuteronomy 7 verse 13, and I'm talking now about kingdom increase. The Message Bible says the following. It says, He will love you, He will bless you, and He will increase you. I love that. It says here, God will love you, He will bless you, and He will increase you. Psalm 115 verse 14 says, The Lord shall increase you more and more, and you and your children. Now shall increase you more and more. In the Hebrew, actually it means he will continue to add to you over and above. That's wonderful. He will add to you over and above. In Leviticus chapter 26 verse 4, the Bible says the following. It says, I'll give you rain in due season. And the land shall yield her increase. And the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Isn't that beautiful? Beautifully said. And so I want to take you now to Genesis 6 to 29. And where we are going to talk about symbols of kingdom prosperity. In verse 28 in the New Living Translation, the Bible says the following, We can clearly and plainly see that the Lord is with you. Isn't that wonderful? We can clearly and plainly see that the Lord is with you. In the Message Bible, in verse 28, the Bible says, We have realized that God is on your side. Isn't that wonderful to have? It's wonderful to have God on your side. The Good News Bible says, Now it is clear that the Lord God has blessed you. Now let's talk about symbols of kingdom prosperity. In Zechariah 8.13, in the New Living Translation, the Bible says the following. It says, Among the nations... Judah and Israel had become symbols of what it means to be cursed. But no longer. Now I will rescue you and make you both a symbol and a source of blessing, the Bible says. So don't be afraid, discouraged, but instead get on with building the temple. Zechariah 9, verse 16 to 17, goes on and says the following. 
and the Lord their God shall save them in the day as the flock of his people. For they shall be as the stones of a crown lifted up as an ensign upon this land. For how great is his goodness. Wonderful. And how great is his beauty. Corn shall make the young men cheerful and new wine the maids. Well, the word lifted up in Hebrew actually means to make conspicuous and to make one sparkle. Ensign here in the Hebrew means to gleam from afar, to be conspicuous as a signal, a flag fluttering in the wind, a sign, a token, and an emblem. The New King James Version of the Bible says the following. It says, The Lord the God will save them in that day as the flock of his people. For they shall be like the jewels of a crown lifted up like a banner over this land. Another translation says, On that day the Lord their God will rescue them as the flock of the people. They will certainly sparkle in the land like jewels in a crown. Now Galatians 6 verse 9 in the Amplified Version says, So let us not lose heart nor grow weary and faint in acting. Do not loosen your relax or your courage and faint. That is what the Bible is encouraging you not to do. Don't give up. Don't lose courage and don't faint. Now to claim uh, in the Webster's uh, dictionary we find that to claim means to take as the rightful owner. To assert in the face of possible contradiction a right to claim or demand. Joshua 8.3 in the Good News Bible says the following. It says, How long are you going to wait before you go in and take the land? John 14.13 says the following. It says, Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, says Jesus, that will I do, that my Father may be glorified in the Son. In other words here, ladies and gentlemen, this statement gives you the power of attorney to use the name of Jesus to ask your heavenly Father for anything that you want. Now whatever you demand as your Christian right, I will see to it that it is carried out. If you look at the original Greek that's the rendering there. It says, for whatever you demand as your Christian right, I will see to it that it's carried out. For all of you who will take my word and stand on it, listen carefully to that. For all of you that will take my word and stand on it, saith the Lord, the kingdom is for you. The angels are are for you, and all of heaven's reserves are at your call. The word of the Lord, through a man of God, it says, use your authority. Command Satan to take his hand off your money. Release the ministering spirits, the angels of God that are sent to minister to the heirs of salvation, to go out there and to bring you your bounty, to bring you your money. Declare this out aloud, without reservation. Heavenly Father, I thank you, for your word is true. I thank you that your word works for me. I give it first place and authority in my life. 
I claim every need met on the authority of God's word. I claim, and you can insert whatever you want to claim in that place. I claim a specific amount. Now, Satan, you take your hands of my finances. Now, ministering spirits, you go and cause the money to come. I believe it. I receive it. I possess it. I claim it. And I take it as my rightful inheritance. And Father, I now thank you in Jesus' name for what you have done. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I trust that that word of God encouraged you and blessed you because we are talking on the subject of blessed beyond measure. I cannot but emphasize that once you have the blessing of God in your life by obedience and by your dedication to the Lord, the blessing of the Lord will steadily grow and increase in your life. The favor of God will be your portion and you will see favor upon favor. I'd like to say it like this, heaped favor. You'll find blessing upon blessing and I'd like to call it heaped blessing. And so I trust you enjoyed this word. And I'd like you next week to join again with me as I share the Word of God with you. And we'll carry on speaking about being blessed beyond measure. I now want to offer to you, to pray with you, a prayer of salvation. There are many of you that are watching and have not made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. Or there are some that are watching me who have at one time or other made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, but because of disappointment in the church, you walked away from the things of God and said this doesn't work, and you have ever since been disconnected from your Creator. But today, as I ministered the Word, there has been a longing in your heart to be reconnected to your creator of the universe through Jesus Christ. Now all you have to do is pray a simple prayer. And it goes like this. If you would just pray this prayer with me today and become a child of God. You can pray this prayer. Dear God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word says that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I now ask Jesus to come into my heart, to be the Lord of my life, and I now receive eternal life into my spirit. And according to Romans 10 verse 9, for if you tell others with your own mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and you believe with all your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now you can rejoice because if you prayed that prayer, you're now a child of God. You can declare now that I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I now have Christ dwelling in me. And greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. And now I ask of you to walk in the consciousness of your new life in Christ Jesus. Now I have one more appeal to you or for you. I'd like you to find a good Bible-based church that is teaching the Word of Faith, teaching the Word of God, and go and join that church nearest to you. And start fellowshipping and grow in your newfound faith and so that you can enjoy the blessings of God. And so I trust that you have been blessed with the program and now I want to take this opportunity to pray 
for all those that need prayer. Whatever it is, whether it's a need for finances, whether it's a need for healing, whether there's some form of crisis in your life, whether it is a marital problem, whether it's a problem at work, whether it's a crisis with children, whatever it is, I want you to lift up your hand or hold the hand of somebody near you or touch the screen as a point of contact and pray this prayer with me and receive this. I command in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that the demon spirit that is withholding the blessings and causing sickness in that body to be bound in Jesus' name. I cast you out and I say to you, be healed in the name of Jesus. I speak to the mountain of finances and I say, be plucked up and cast into the sea. I speak to that relationship problem and I say, be reconciled in the name of Jesus. I speak to those that have infirmities, whether you're blind, deaf, dumb, mute, or you have other illnesses, whether it's your heart, whether it's you know other parts of your body, lay hands on it. And as I pray, receive this blessing on your life. In the name of Jesus, I command all pain to go. I command in the name of Jesus that that spirit of infirmity to be bound. In Jesus' name, I command it to go and for you to be healed in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. Now you can just go ahead and test yourself and see that you have been healed and blessed. Not like you. You see our information on the screen. I'd like you to please write to us, email us, or communicate with us in whatever format you choose to just share your testimony with us and to be an encouragement to us. Tell us that you enjoyed the program, you were encouraged by it, that you were built up by it. We'd like to hear some positive feedback from you, how this program has touched your life. And I would also encourage you that out there that are listening to me, that are not immediately belonging to our church family in order to make this program to come to your area would like you to sow a seed by faith our details have come up on the screen and you can go ahead and sow a seed by faith and let God bless you because he cannot do anything without you first putting seed in the ground and if you put seed in the ground where you plant your money, good things will happen in your life. I now want to end the program by saying, the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his face and give you peace. And may you experience empowerment and prosperity in every area of your life. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is Pastor Singh here from Rama FCI Durban here in South Africa, wishing you all the best and trust that you have a wonderful, wonderful day, that you would enjoy the day, and that I look forward next week for you to join with me and with us where we will carry on speaking about blessed beyond measure. So I trust that you will tune in, join the broadcast, and we'll carry on talking about this wonderful subject about being blessed beyond measure. Until then, this is Pastor Singh greeting you. God bless. Amen and Amen.